G'day guys and welcome to me lab. Now, we're about to start our 13th lesson in our Zero to Zelda series, how to make an ARPG in Godot 4, and there's only a few of our normal sort of lessons left. I will do a series of shorter um, snippets after this just to keep showing some things that you can do to extend yourself. So don't think that when you get to lesson 14 it's all over. We're actually going to keep coming out with, with different things every uh, few days or so just to keep you progressing if you've got the time to do so. But in this lesson, lesson number 13, we are going to be adding our, um, our sort of our death scene. So in Zelda when you die it brings up a black screen giving you a few options. So we're going to emulate that in our game so that our player can either start again or quit the game. So that's the plan for today. Let's uh, have a look at our recap and go from there. All right, so if you've been following along, you should have done these following things. You should have created your project and your tile map, set up layers and collisions, created our player and enemy and given them both animations and movement, um, set up our combat system, including health and health bars. We gave our player an attack function and a death animation. We set up a new scene um, and transitions between them. And then we set up in our last lesson, our collectible. And in this one, well, we're gonna make our game over screen to give our player an option to quit or start again. Why? Well, it's a standard part of a game. You don't want it just to show that blank screen when we die. Um, and so a player can exit or continue when they die. It's up to them. The skills you'll need today, well, you need to be able to understand and apply how to create a new scene, what to do with nodes and child nodes, and also to create and modify GD script. And your success today is going to look like when you die, you can choose to start again or quit out of the game. All right, so let's get stuck into it. So the first thing we need to do is create a new scene for our game over scene. So if you remember, we go up to the top here, we just click on our little plus sign, that creates a new scene straight away. Now the root node we want for our new game over scene is gonna be a canvas layer. So let's type in canvas layer, that gives it to us and rename it like we always do to game over. Then when we go to save it, it'll automatically call it game over scene. All right, so we've got our root node sorted out. Excellent. Our next step is to create some child nodes. The first one we want is a label and the label is going to be our game over words. All right, and how that's going to appear on the screen. And over in our inspector on our right hand side is where we can actually see the text box. And we're just going to type in there game over like that. Now, couple of things we should talk about. So when we've got our label here, you see we've got our little red dots, but we've also got these four green um, sort of arrowy type things. What they're saying is where do you want um, this word game over to be in relation to everything else? Now, if we zoom out of our screen here a little bit, you'll actually see that we've got our, this is sort of our whole screen that's been bordered here with the other lines. And what we really want, we want our game over to be sort of in the middle and we want um, these to show the entire thing because we want game over to be centered in the middle of this setup, right? So now we need to sort of work out roughly where we think the middle is, somewhere around there. Okay, and now we want to add a couple more um, objects to our scene. We want to add some buttons this time. So we go out, we click on game over because we want our root node selected. Click the plus and we search for button. We're going to do that a second time. So we got two new buttons. See how when I did that one, it actually made it a child node of the button above it, just because I had this one selected when I made it. We don't want that. We want that to be a child node of the root node. So we just drag it and then they're all the same. Now they're all child, children of the game over node. So our first button, this one is going to be retry. And our second button is going to be quit. Makes sense, doesn't it? All right, so now we've got to do a similar thing how we moved our game over to the middle here. So let's grab our first button. Let's grab it. Uh, it looks like I've grabbed its arrow things first because I didn't want to zoom in, lazy me. Let's move it down here. I think that's the quit one I managed to grab. That's all right. Now let's grab these arrows, do the exact same thing. So we're putting all the little arrow things to the same spot. And then we put our game over retry and quit in the middle here. So let's just zoom in and make sure we got this all laid out nice and neatly. Actually, that looks all right. But we can test how it looks, right? So we can click, instead of clicking on the play button, because we've done no code or anything, this won't start. We can click on this one over here that's like the clapperboard. That allows us to only run the scene we have selected. So if we click on that one, we should get our, oh, so I've got it slightly out of alignment there, okay? So we can just easily change that a little bit. Let's just grab these things, bring them down here a bit. See if that looks all right. And there they are, and that's good enough for me for now. Now, like I said, this is not perfect. 
um, I've said good enough, right? Because we're not trying to make the perfect game. I'm just trying to get the basics there. And if you want to fiddle around and try and work out how to get it perfect, that is fine for you to do in your own time. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we don't want to spend 10 minutes going through just measuring things and stuff, okay? So we're just going to make it look near enough is good enough for now. You're more than welcome to tweak it in your own time if it bothers you. But there is our basic um, scene that we needed to create. So the next thing we need to do is um, create a script for it. So let's close down our little demo window again, take us back here. And if you remember when we're creating scripts, we click on our root node and we click on that little um, scroll with the plus sign. And yeah, we want it to be called gameover.gd. And there we go. And it's extending canvas layer. So remember we've talked about before, whatever your root node is that you create the script for, that's what's going to be extended. And so we're extending canvas layer in this particular um, situation. And what we need to do here is we actually need to signal some things back through. So those buttons we made are similar to those area 2Ds. We can actually use them to signal our script. So the way we would do that is click on the button, click on the node, right? And then you'll see um, here, there's a pressed option and we want to signal pressed back to the game over script. And we want to do the same thing with the other one. So we're signaling these through. So on button pressed, on button two pressed, makes sense. What we might do actually is rename these just to make it a bit more obvious. So I think we'll change this one to retry and we'll change this one to quit and then I'll rename it here too. So we'll say on retry and on quit just because we want it to still make sense right so we've lost our signals but we should be able to fix that let's just um, disconnect and reconnect and that should reconnect there and we can do the same on retry so let's just disconnect reconnect there you go. All right, so we've got our extend canvas layer and we've got our two um, on pressed functions. Now we need to put some code in there, right? So what we want to do first is um, tell when retry is pressed, we want it to start playing the game. So this would be how we would do that. Let's just make sure we've got our tabs and everything right. So our world scene is our normal scene that we want to play. So we're saying if we press retry, just start that world scene again and you can see down here our world scene right down the bottom there so we're going to run that um, if this button is pressed but our quit is going to be a little bit different right so for our quit we actually just want to quit so I'll show you how we do that it's really straightforward we oops too many tabs there we go get tree dot quit okay so this setup now means that when we die well actually it doesn't yet we have to change our player script but it will mean when we die we have two options to either start the game again or just quit out of the game okay so let's save that scene let's go to our player script and we'll do our next bit there i'm going to stop this video just so we've got some nice neat stop points um, and so our next step is the player script all right, here we are in our player script and this is gonna be super short and sweet. Scroll down to the bottom where we created this on animated sprite 2D animation finished function, right? So we made that to make sure that our player's death animation would finish playing before the game quit. So we wanna add our game over scene to run after this. Now, what you might be thinking is we would add it to our die function, which was somewhere, can't even find it anymore. Um, there wasn't much to it. The, our die function, basically, there it is. It basically just checked to see what our health was and then ran that um, animated sprite play die. You would think we could add in our um, death bit here, but no, because we still want that animation to finish. So, but instead of Q free, we want to be able to do this. Um, I think that would be there, right? Get tree animation change scene to file, game over scene. So this is changing the scene to the game over scene. If you remember in the game over scene, we did something similar. We're, get tree change scene to file world dot scene so that's changing our scene to the world scene well in our player we're changing our scene after our death animation is finished to the game over scene so i hope that makes sense we should save that and now in theory when i play the game we should be able to go and find a magpie let it kill us and then it'll go to that game over scene now remember if you were to go and get the stick first the uh the magpies would avoid you and you'd never be able to die so don't do that just make sure you go and find a magpie first up so i'm going to stop this video then we're going to test it um and then we'll get into our must may might and all that stuff all right let's test the game so we come up the top we hit our play button 
should open our game up. There's our dude, so we'll just make sure that all works. If I go and grab that stick, then the magpies will avoid me. So we don't want to do that today. Let's go and find a magpie. There is a magpie. Come for me. All right, gonna gonna kill me. And we die, the animation finishes, and up comes our screen. Fantastic. Now, can it work? Retry, straight back to the start. Excellent, let's go die again. Kill me, no. Oh, you terrible magpie. Stop it, stop it. This is like a nightmare for some of my friends, hey? We die, we hit quit, and it quits out. Perfect, well done guys. All right, let's have a look at our must may might. All right, our must may might for this lesson, you must create your game over scene and script, as well as edit the player script. Um, you may, given we're almost at the end, like to add some detail where you can. So improving your tile map, maybe adding some new types of enemies, things like that. And your might, well, you might want to add additional scenes or collectibles to make your game even more engaging. Our debrief for today, well, you should have created your game over scene, as simple as that. Next time will be our final standard lesson and we are going to create um, an opening scene. We're going to add some music and some other little touches. But like I said, we're going to keep coming out with new uh, videos thereafter, just with little tidbits here and there to help you keep progressing. And the quote I'd like to leave you with today, well, education begins the person, but reading, good company and reflection finish them. And that is from John Locke. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.